So in FreeCAD, I want to make an F18 and talk about some of the things that went behind in making this. Now, if you've been with the channel a while, you've probably seen I've made a Corsair already. This was with the uh, Curved Shapes Workbench, and this is uh, a Corsair right here that was made more from lofting. So I've got a few things that, that I've already done, but this seems quite simple, at least visually, compared to an F18, and uh, at least to prove out that FreeCAD can do some pretty complex you know, geometries. Uh, I wanted to go through how I made the F18, if it helps anybody. This is going to be the same principle as the Corsair. I'm going to start a new part, and on the image workbench, we'll grab a picture. I chose my front view, and I'm going to put that on my XZ or my front plane. And as I turn my view, you can see how it shows up. So if I go to the front view up here, I'm looking to the plane head on. Now, I may want to also have a reference sketch. So I'll go into the sketcher, create a sketch again on the front plane, and I'll use my origin as the very um, you know point front point of the aircraft. So I can, when I close my sketch, identify my origin quickly and easily uh, visually. If I go to my image plane now and I double click on it in the tree, I have the option to move it around. And I'll make my translation increment, that's about right, right? Very, just make sure you have a very small increment. Let's go to the front plane and see if I can stick about the tip of the F-18 right onto the origin. Next, I want to go back to the image workbench and let's begin to import another image. I'm going to import my side image and we'll stick this on the side plane and also you can download these um, images at the grad, GrabCAD link in the description. So I'm going to come up here and if I go to my absolute side view here I can see that my origin would be right here and I'll stick that right on the tip of the plane. And I may have to zoom in and make a few fine adjustments. That seems about right. Now I want to import the top view. And let's do the same, going to the top view. That's about right. So now I have three images, and uh, we know that they're all aligned properly. One final thing to do is if I come over here, I can see that my images are well illuminated. That might not always be the case if I have different settings. If I go to preferences, and display and disable my backlight color and apply that. When I come around here, these images appear quite dark. And uh, sometimes it's not very nice to model around a dark image, so I recommend turning on from the preferences menu the backlight color. Now, with these properly aligned, <laughs> I don't necessarily have to leave them where they are, so I'll uh, double click first off on my front image plane and move it back just as long as it's remained aligned on the other two axes and then I'll say rename and we'll call this front so if we need to refer to this image in the future we can easily ascertain what it is now for this image I can move my side view all the way out here this helps keep everything out of each other's way. We'll rename that to side. And I can go to my top image, rename it to top. And I'll move that down as well. So now if I go to my front view, my front view is still aligned with my origin. My top view still aligned with my origin. And my side view still aligned with the origin. But the pictures are out of each other's way so it doesn't you know, get in the way of itself. Next, um, how do I want to start sketching this? Because there's a few uh, ways that we can do this. My strategy is going to be, I'm going to loft the main body, 
and then I'll probably loft either the canopy or the wings and then focus on details after that. To do so, I want to use visual datum planes that the uh, part design workbench can provide. And so I'll focus on making this in part design. I also want to talk about, because I made this Corsair in uh, the curved shapes workbench, the possibility of making something a little bit more complex in its body and how curved shapes um, works and interacts and what some possible weak points might be because I would be asking curve shapes to do something that it really wasn't designed to do. Uh, so let's get started first by making a series of planes. I'll jump into the part design workbench here and I'm going to create a plane. Of course there has to be an active body so I'm just going to create an active body and then we have our plane. If I go to my absolute side view here, and I want this to be parallel to the XZ plane, so I can highlight XZ, create my datum plane, and then it should be in the Z direction that I can offset this, and I'll simply flip sides. And I'm going to move this plane right around here. You can see that we have a curvature change across this nose. And so as we go to loft this, we want to have a little concavity or a little bend. So that would be my first plane. I'm going to go back and highlight my XZ again and create another plane. Flip sides. Right there. And I'm simply making planes where I think I can highlight the curvature of the loft that I want to make in the future. We're going to go with XZ again, datum plane. We'll flip sides. And that's a good point. So we'll say OK to that. Now XZ again. We'll create yet. We'll see if we need any additional planes here. If I go to my top view now, one correction that I'd like to make is I think I ought to end the body right here, whereas before I continued the body into this section. And I don't think that's as realistic for the uh, F-18. So I'm going to end my body section here. The question is, can we smoothly loft out a body going this way? You'll also see that it becomes very thin here, right? The body becomes quite thin, and then it kind of widens out again. That's a mistake that I made that I didn't catch early on. And I'd like to, this time around, make sure that we have a, a thick, almost like backbone coming back to the rear of the plane, which is a lot more realistic to how the F-18 looks than what we're seeing in this image. So I'm going to start off with um, sketching actually on the uh, XZ plane. So I'll highlight my XZ plane and create a sketch. And whether I do it in part or part design, I don't think it makes too much difference. I'm going to use the space bar to hide my previously set datum planes now. And since this will be so simple, since we're right on the nose of the plane, I'm going to create a circle. We're going to say Shift R to make a uh, radius dimension. And I'll open up my keyboard monitor in case you need to see the hotkeys I use. And from here, um, I'm going to say 0.1 millimeters, right? Something just super small. As I've said in other videos, when we start talking about dimensions, I prefer to uh, make it from the images and scale my finished product. You can also say make a line like what we've made here to mark our origin. Make that say something like the length of the plane and try to scale the image to the length of the plane if you want to make it right straight off. But I don't think it's a big deal either way. So we'll uh, exit the sketch now. We're going to close. And let's jump on our next plane, which would be datum plane. And I want to sketch out what would appear to be the cross-sectional area uh, that I have in my images. And you can see um, we are, if I go normal to my sketch, kind of blocked by this image. And I'd like to sketch on the other side of my plane. So to do that, I'll go to, uh, first off, I'll highlight my sketch in the tree. And in data, we're going to say map reversed, 
and we're going to say true. And now if I click on the normal to sketch button, my sketch flips around so I can see everything in front of my image, which is what I've intended. Now I'll hide my data plane once again and start to ask myself what kind of cross section am I seeing here? And you can't really ascertain it just by looking at one image. So let's take a look at our side view and we can see that, you know, we'll have not necessarily a circular, but sort of maybe an oval type cross section. So going back to the front view to actually start sketching, I'm going to use a uh, B spline and for symmetry purposes, it's probably easiest to sketch and loft half of my plane's body. Right, so I'll go to my side view with these two vertical lines drawn. And my primary goal is to make sure that my vertical line captures um, where my body ends. And I have to, uh, due to the way that these views work, sort of go uh, at an angle and then go back to make sure that my update was necessary. So let's go to the front view here and that looks, that's looking pretty good. So I'm gonna say Shift V and just give that a vertical dimension to lock in the positions of these lines. Again, due to scaling, I'm not concerned with what the actual dimension is, right? Am I trying to build a full-size F-18? Am I trying to build a toy F-18? It's really up to the design intent, and so I'm just making something that's gonna match the profiles of the images and not worry about scale. I'm gonna go with a B-spline now, and I think a four-point B-spline should be sufficient. So there's four points. I'm gonna make sure that we are horizontal here and horizontal here. And now I can adjust um, my B spline because no matter what, the horizontal constraints made sure that my B spline is ending on horizontal. So when we mirror this over, these will be tangent to each other in the mirror. And that's our goal. So I think that's gonna look pretty reasonable for the F18. And I could lock those in with dimensions. I don't think I need to. Um, so let's just check this with the uh, top view here and our B spline, it might go just a hair wide. So if I move this in just a hair, it looks like that we are pretty good. So I'm going to exit the sketch, right? And uh, now this origin marking sketch, I can just hide with the space bar since we probably aren't going to be using that the rest of the time, right? We have the images and in the actual origin now. I'm going to highlight my next datum plane, datum plane 001. We're going to go to the side over here and this is right about where the canopy starts um, and it's going to be the same principle, right? So this may become a little bit of a redundant portion uh, but it's probably worth going through. Now you can see we have a mirror image of uh, what I'm sketching on so I'm going to hide my datum plane, go to my sketch 3, and go to mappers verse equals true, hit the normal button, and that looks a bit more like how we've been doing it. Uh, so once more, I can import a point, but in fact, I don't even need to because I know my origin is in there. I'm gonna put a vertical line off of my origin and another vertical line down here. And let's go to our side view, and we're gonna come down a hair and up a hair and <laughs> higher here and higher here both. So we're gonna go a little higher, a little higher. That's not too bad, a little lower I think. Bit higher, right? All right, so we've got that and shift V, there we go, to lock in the positions of these lines. Back to the front view now, and I think we're gonna be pretty safe to match the image down here. Uh, we'll grab another B spline, maybe a five point B spline. It gives you just a hair more control. That's nice to have sometimes. We'll again add our horizontal constraints and that makes sure that we'll have good consistency when we go to mirror this body. So I'm just trying to manipulate 
these splines to match the image of this body as close as I can. That's probably good there. And you can lock it in with dimensions if you want to, probably not necessary with how much freehand that we're doing here. So we'll exit the sketch, tasks close, and there we have the next portion of our body. Highlighting the next data plane, data plane 002. We'll go onto the right plane now, and this is right where the canopy ends. Should be a little bit more fun and interesting because now we're going to start having a, a, a bit of a backbone to deal with, right? Um, so as this kind of goes into the main part of the body. But actually, you know, when I look at this, I think it's probably better just to loft uh, this whole profile as one thin thing and add in other elements later. So let's do it that way. Again, with the map reversed, we'll uh, go to sketch 004, map reverse is true, hit the normal button, and I'll hide my datum plane. Now, I'm, of course, it's going to be a little bit challenging to uh, <laughs> estimate, you know, how high the canopy goes, but it shouldn't be too bad. Uh, same strategy as before. Right? We're just drawing half this body in certain sections to make sure that we can loft it in a good and accurate way. I'm going to estimate that the line should be about that long and that the back of the canopy will be up here. Let's see how I did. We'll go to the right plane, a little bit higher here and maybe a pinch higher there. So we're going to raise this up and raise this up once more, a little more adjusting back down here and a little more down. That's not too bad. I'll lock those in again. Shift V, Shift V. Go back to the front view. And how do I want this uh, body to turn out? <laughs> well, I'll have it I'll use another five point B spline. Grab these two points horizontal and these first two points horizontal. And that actually, the way that it just fell into place probably matches the F18 pretty well in how I want to do this. Um, yep, I'm going to call that good. So we'll uh, close that. Our next datum plane, 003, right? Because we just had 002. So we might see a little bit of drama in uh, how this loft is going to propagate. And that is uh, going to another question that a subscriber had asked me about getting lofts to work together and some of the strategies behind there. So we'll, we'll go through that also because I wouldn't expect this to be an absolutely perfect, you know, loft. We'll go to the top view plane is back here. That's where I want to end my body. And we want to have a rib whose width is about that far. Uh, this will be quite lower from the side view. We want to end down here. So we're going to have a, a short profile as compared to the last view that we've done. So let's get normal to, oh, I guess I have to sketch first. We're going to sketch and then We'll go into map reverse and hiding the plane. Get normal to the sketch again. We're gonna go with a vertical line, perhaps up to here, and a line down to here. Go to the side view. Our bottom line seems good, but our top line, let's get it lower side view now, you know, probably even with this edge. So just a hair higher. Bit higher. There we go. Let's say shift V and lock these in as before. We also know that this body should be narrower, so we're going to plan on making a pretty narrow profile. Get normal to our sketch and grab our spline. I'm kind of liking this uh, 
five point spline business. Now I made this coincident, which I didn't mean to, so I'm going to delete that coincident relation. Let's go with horizontal, horizontal here. Make sure that this is a nice narrow profile. And let's go to the top view and check our width. That's probably not too bad. So I'm going to stick with that. Let's close our sketch. Now I foresee some uh, weeble wobble in between these two profiles. So let's be careful in how we look at our loft and do this. Uh, the first thing, because I've made this in part design, I'm relatively confident that I can continue in part design and go with a loft feature. I'll choose my initial sketch and then we're going to add and we can choose this from the graphics display sections to our sketch. And that's what I kind of estimated would happen is you'd get a sort of an unsteady weeble wobble that doesn't really match our profile. Now if I go to the side view, you can see it, it actually runs through the body pretty good. It's just this last little part that seems to have trouble. So why don't we add an intermediate sketch in here and see what happens. Um, let's actually delete that loft and add another datum plane. And as before, I'm going to highlight my XZ plane. I'll go to the right view, flip sides, and as we go to the Z offset, we'll try to add something, you know, kind of in the middle of where those other sketches are. I'm going to say probably there. And let's create a sketch. We'll map reverse. Get normal and hide the plane with the space bar. And same strategy. I'm guessing right there and probably right there. Let's go to the side now. So close. I'm probably going to move this up just a pinch. And we'll move this up a little bit more from the side view. Not bad. Shift V. Shift V. Go back normal now. B spline. Five points. Horizontal. Horizontal. We know we want this to start narrowing, but not be quite as narrow as the last profile. So let's see what that looks like from the top. That's probably about right. Now if I show my other sketches with the space bar and get a comparison. Yeah, we start to narrow up here. I think that'll work. So let's try a loft. We'll go Tasks and Close. Now let's add in our next loft, starting here. And since these sketches were made now out of order, it's pretty important to choose them from the graphics display as I'm doing and not from the tree. And we still have some Weeble Wobble, right? It is better. And from the top, yeah, this seems to match pretty well, but we do walk around here. So one of the uh, things that could easily fix this is a tool that would allow lofting to be normal to profile. Now we don't have this in FreeCAD. I'm sure that it's on its way to come because FreeCAD is just an amazing software and has amazing updates that kind of 
blows me away every time as to how much every version is better than the next. But when we get normal to profile, if we specify this normal to profile and this normal to profile, then we'll have a pretty straight shot in between these profiles. Since we don't have that, I'm going to add one more sketch in between here, and we're going to see how that goes, maybe right at the base of those wings. I am getting a wider body than I had in my initial model, which is what I wanted. I wanted to uh, fix that this time around. so. I think we're doing pretty good, and as, if you can tell, it looks like almost this yellow part is a part of the picture, like it matches the line so well. So I think that shows that we're going to make a pretty reasonably accurate uh, F18 according to the pictures that we've uh, been making. So I'm going to cancel my loft. Hopefully this will be the very last plane. And then I want to go into <laughs> another alternative way that I made this F18 model that you're looking at the picture of and how curved shapes fits into making a body like this. So we'll grab um, our XZ plane once more. We'll grab a datum plane. So we're going to say OK. We'll start a sketch. Map reverse. View normal. Get rid of our datum plane, and <laughs> we're finally ready to sketch. I'm going to make a new feature, and of course I'm going to guess about there. And maybe around, well, maybe around there. Let's take it to the side. Oh, so close. I'm going to move this up a hair, and up a hair here. I think we match pretty reasonably well there. So, Shift V. And Shift V. <laughs> but not when I don't type V into the dimension, of course. There we go. Finally, we'll view normal again. Five point spline. Hopefully, you're not tired of watching this, but I'd probably be getting tired of just watching all these body profiles being made if I was just watching this. All right, we're gonna say horizontal. There we go, these two points horizontal. This point and this point horizontal. And we'll hopefully sculpt this well. Move this guy in a bit more but still to the outside of some of the other profiles that we've worked on. So we'll view it from the top. We'll probably make that a little more narrow. From the front from the top, pull that out just a hair, and let's give that a try, right? Tasks close. We're going to start a loft. But uh, we were on the wrong um, sketch, so of course I'll choose this sketch and then begin my loft. We're going to add to here and here. And here, here, and we'll conclude there. Now if we go to the side view, that fits quite well. Let's go to the top view, that fits well. And the front view, harder to see, but that fits well, I think, as well. I'm going to accept that. So when we look at all these lines, I think there's a cardinal sin that we can address, right? Um, <clears throat> I'm going to delete my additive loft for now and show you a quick correction to make. I'm going to use the space bar here, show each of my sketches. Right, so that's our lofting profiles. Now I come over here and look at this. This is a circle to represent the tip of the plane, but I would do better to uh, make that for construction. 
And then it would also be better to make some lines that I actually merge with my origin. We're going to choose a V for vertical on these. I'll choose a coincident constraint up here and merge these together, right? So the point is, since everything else is in half, I want to make half a profile here. And since I've used a uh, B spline with two lines, I'm trying to replicate the same number of sketch elements as I go through as well. Now, of course, I can use a center point arc or I can use a three point arc and make it equal. So we're gonna say E for equal, we're fully defined, we'll close that. And for some reason I jumped to the start page, so <laughs> come down over here and now let's go to part design. Start our loft all over again with our sketch and we'll keep on adding sections as before. And I think this is going to look a little bit more smooth with, yeah, we have much better definition. So uh, sometimes those really small sketches that you don't see or can compare easily with the other ones will get you like it did me. But look how much smoother that is, uh, right? A lot more consistent. So let's test that from the top. Looks like everything matches really well. Test that from the side. Again, it seems to fit the body and the image pretty well. And from the front, a little bit harder to tell, but I think that does its job. Uh, so how does this compare to other methods? Well, let's take a look at uh, this F18 over here. Now I'm gonna just break this down to what we just made. So I'll fast forward. All right, here we are in my original F18 and I wanna show you what uh, one of the problems that I had uh, came to, right? So I've got my original sketch down here that looks a lot like our other beginning sketch. And when I go to do a loft here, and I add a section. And keep on adding sections. Look what a mess this becomes. I think my computer even has to think a lot about how to do this final part. Right, so that, that does not look like an F-18 or the F-18 body that we wish to use. So I want to cover just a quick alternative if you're finding lofting like this isn't working. The key problem here is this is very, 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 very small. All right, and I wanted to make it small uh, because of the, to simulate the tip of the uh, aircraft. So one of my options and what I ended up doing was simply starting a sketch or a loft rather with this back profile and I add a section and add another section right and I think I even added another section until things started getting a little bit screwy wampus right um, so maybe I stopped there and that's where I got that really thin uh, profile that I didn't mean for it to be thin uh, when I did my original model. And so if things start to go haywire, then I can remove one section. And then I go into my loft and I can see that I end at this sketch, so I start another loft with this section. And I continue to add. And I simply split it up into multiple lofts. Right, and you can see that uh, F-18s don't bulge out like that. So I've probably added one too many profiles. And that looks a little bit more realistic. Well, there's still a bulge right there, but... 
For the example of what I'm doing, you can see how splitting it up into multiple lofts can be helpful if you cannot uh, come up with a body or find a problem with the loft that's been happening uh, the other time. So that is one way to troubleshoot lofting. Now I think my um, previous lofting had ended up being a lot better than this body, but this hopefully illustrates the point that you can break this up into smaller pieces and uh, have it work out, which is what I ended up doing in this F-18. I'm going to make sure to not save. <laughs> and we're back to the initial body. Now the next question would come up, what if you wanted to use curved surfaces? And it, for this particular body, curved surfaces is brilliant and would save a lot of time. Now I want to make an illustration for another approach in using curved shapes, and that would be uh, with this F-18 here. So you'll see that we end with an oval because we started, if I zoom, way in with a oval. The rest of the body is dictated, of course, by three shapes. And if you haven't seen the curved surfaces workbench, uh, it's probably worth watching a video on this. But if, what if we want to have, you know, more of a divot in between here? Well, curved surfaces was never meant to go into a bunch of changing profiles, right? We're just taking an oval and we're moving it down the profiles that are dictated by our sketches, but we don't really switch to a new profile uh, just because we've lofted it. So we don't switch to a new profile just like we would if we lofted it, right? Curved uh, shapes was not meant to act that way, and I mean, nor should it. We were, I would be asking curved shapes to um, act in a way that it wasn't designed to be done if I wanted a profile that looked at, in the back to have more of like this profile here it almost looks like you know the number eight where it comes out and in like that so if we start with an oval uh, we're probably going to be constrained to an oval uh, with if we use the curved shapes approach so bear in mind that the scope of what you do um, in curved shapes kind of matters because you don't want to start with an oval up here and expect to end with something like a figure eight shape in the back. So that's curved shapes, that's uh, lofting, that's how we've created our body. Um, let's do some more in the next video. I hope this was helpful. If it was, please subscribe. I'll see you in the next one.